282 gross registered tons. Inside, she can host up to nearly 6,300 guests who are served by an army of 2,400 crew members. Given her enormous scale, it should come as no surprise that Allure of the Seas shares the title of the world's largest cruise ship with Oasis of the Seas. Built by the STX shipyard in Turku, Finland, Allure had the first element of her superstructure laid into place in 2008. That first block, a part of the ship's massive hull, weighed in at over 600 tons. Next, prefabricated sections of the ship were moved into position like giant puzzle pieces. With incredible precision and accuracy, each was welded into place. The heart of the ship, her six powerful diesel engines, were then placed deep inside the hull. The engines are coupled to special propellers that can rotate a full 360 degrees, giving the ship remarkable maneuverability and seaworthiness. During a special float-out ceremony, only a year and a half after construction began, Allure moved from her dry dock to her wet dock. The grand vessel touched water for the first time. Here, work continued on both the exterior and interior of the ship until August of 2010. Then came a most important moment in Allure's young life, her sea trials. Sea trials represent the first opportunity for shipbuilders to see how a vessel handles real-world situations. A setback during sea trials could mean months, even years of delays. But true to form, Allure passed with flying colors. In fact, she outperformed expectations. Back at the shipyard in Finland, workers resumed construction at an increasing pace. With the first passengers scheduled to arrive in a few short months, the ship still needed a number of finishing touches. In late summer 2010, Royal Caribbean crew members began to arrive in Finland. Their mission? Prepare the ship for passengers. Because Royal Caribbean standards are so high, pre-cruise preparations are no small task. Everything had to be fine-tuned, from gourmet recipes to Broadway productions and beyond. But thanks to teamwork and a lot of long hours, everything came together. Soon, Allure of the Seas received a royal welcome at her new home at Terminal 18 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. From here, she set sail to ports of call across the Caribbean. But as anyone who's spent time aboard will testify, Allure of the Seas is truly a destination in of herself. Royal Caribbean's exclusive neighborhood concept comes to life in Allure of the Seas' seven distinct districts. Central Park, Boardwalk, the Royal Promenade, the Pool and Sports Zone, Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center, Entertainment Place, and Youth Zone. Let's take a closer look at each. We begin with charming Central Park, Allure's unique living park at sea. Central Park was designed to bring the outdoors to the very core of the ship, complete with open skies and tropical plants. Spanning the length of a football field, it was no easy task bringing this space to life. We had uh, 60 staff from Ambius, that's the company that uh, designed the park and uh, provided the plants and the, uh, the actual everything that you see around. And then we also had on a daily basis two teams of uh, 18 Royal Caribbean staff to help out. So there was a total of 88 people. Uh, the original plan was for it to be done in four days and we were lucky enough to be able to have accomplished it in three. The park itself is made up of 46 planter beds and into those there are over 12,000 plants and then we also have um, 56 trees and vine varieties in the living wall. People's first reaction when they come into the park is, is just one of a wow and amazement that uh, they're surrounded by living, breathing plants. There's no artificial plants in the park at all. Everything is in soil, everything is irrigated, and everything is alive and growing. We have a team of four. We have one landscape specialist and three horticulturists, and their sole job is to care for the park on a daily basis and ensure that everything is being fed and watered uh, to the plant's needs. On a walk through Central Park, you can shop in the elegant coach store, visit the Brito Gallery, or simply enjoy a romantic stroll.
Vintages, an ideal spot for a pre-dinner rendezvous, offers an extensive selection of tapas and fine wines. Of course, a visit to Central Park wouldn't be complete without dinner in one of the neighborhood's fine restaurants. Chops Grill Steakhouse features premium cuts of quality steaks and hearty side dishes. Guests can choose to dine in the elegant dining room or open air patio. Across the way is Giovanni's Table, an Italian family style restaurant that offers both indoor and al fresco seating. For an intimate dining experience, the exclusive 150 Central Park is unforgettable. 150 is a trendy, upscale and intimate restaurant serving six to eight course menus with wine pairings. Central Park also boasts the very first Brito Gallery at Sea by pop culture icon Romero Brito. Uh, and when people come over to this place, the idea is that they're going to see you know, the celebration of life you know, in a very special way. And that's how I see it and how, how I put in my work. Whether it's fine dining or simply relaxing among the trees, Central Park offers one of the most outstanding experiences on board a cruise ship today. Next, we travel to Boardwalk. This eclectic neighborhood pairs the feel of English seaside piers and classic American boardwalks of the early 20th century into a single theme. Boardwalk provides an interactive experience for the entire family, offering fun, food, and engaging entertainment. At the heart of Boardwalk is Allure's one-of-a-kind carousel. Handcrafted from poplar, this full-sized traditional carousel features 18 figures suspended from stainless steel poles, hand-painted zebras, lions, horses, and even a crowned frog prince circle round and round. The carousel was built with children in mind, but it's not uncommon to find kids of all ages enjoying a ride or two. If you're feeling a little more adventurous, scale to new heights on the dueling rock walls. Well, I would tell everyone to come on up and join a great experience. It's outdoors, the back of the ship, amazing views, and just a great time up here on the rock wall. Uh, we have the, both rock walls are 13 meters tall, the two largest rock walls at sea. Um, there are multiple routes on each wall, and on sea days, our busy days, we have both walls open for our many guests that we have on board. Well, some of the activities that we do offer are uh, the beginner sessions, advanced sessions, learn to climbs. We also have kids climbs, adult only sessions. We even do bouldering sessions all the way to just our most famous is the open time as much as we can be. Now, the significance of the bell is that it's an accomplishment that you finally made it to the top and you did something that most people can't do. A lot, a lot of people have trouble climbing and getting up there ringing that bell, it's just a great reward for doing something that you didn't think you were going to do on a cruise ship. Perhaps the best way to enjoy the boardwalk neighborhood is the amazing outdoor venue at the stern of the ship. Here, the 600-seat aqua theater offers a stunning backdrop of the ocean across the horizon. The aqua theater features one of Royal Caribbean production's most ambitious shows ever, Ocean Aria. Ocean Aria is an artistic vision of an underwater world. Guests love Ocean Aria because we have a plethora of talent and an unbelievable stage. Our cast is uh, from all over the world and we have uh, talents such as divers, high divers, dancers, acrobats, and even hand balancers. Our stage is unbelievable as well, whereas it can be 15 feet below you in one moment and 17 meters above you in the next moment. One of Boardwalk's most memorable features is the Fountain Shows, an attraction that catches many visitors by surprise. The fountains are choreographed to music and accented by colorful video on the LED screens. This unique performance space is one of the most technologically advanced areas of the ship. On the whole, Aqua Theater and all of Boardwalk is truly a complete sensory experience. Allure of the Sea's third neighborhood is the Royal Promenade. It's actually located just below the Central Park neighborhood. Here, giant arched skylights in the park above allow an abundance of natural light to shine down to the level below. The Royal Promenade is the social centerpiece of the ship. 
It provides an exciting central area for guests to gather, dine, shop, and be entertained. Probably the greatest range of activities can be found in this neighborhood. On Air offers the chance to be a star on stage and under the lights, karaoke style. Here you'll find a variety of talent during the course of a voyage. And whether they're good or bad, they'll all have one thing in common, a great time. Of course, that's not the only place you'll find live entertainment on the Royal Promenade. Follow the sounds of the beat and you'll find yourself in Boleros, a Latin-themed club and nighttime hotspot. A Royal Caribbean signature bar and guest favorite, the Schooner Bar, is a nautical-themed lounge where you'll find a crowd of friendly faces gathered around the piano, singing along to their favorite songs. Naturally, you'll never worry about going hungry or thirsty around here. The Bow and Stern Pub, Sorrento's, Cafe Promenade, and Champagne and Martini Bar are all here to satisfy, whatever the craving. Good morning, welcome to Starbucks. My name is Maria. What can I get you this morning? For those with a sweet tooth, there's Cupcake Cupboard. Thanks to a lot of TLC, these cupcakes are better than anything you'll find on land. The guests love, um, when they get to experience taking class with that, they absolutely love it. There's so many people out there that have a hard time decorating at home, and so when they come in here and everything is provided for them, they love to just be able to sit down, make a cupcake with their children or by themselves, and be able to take it with them or eat it here and it's totally like a childhood experience for them when they're decorating their cupcake and then they get to just eat the frosting and all the little sprinkles, people love it. Like other neighborhoods on Allure, the Royal Promenade boasts a number of impressive technical innovations. Rising Tide Bar is an experience found in nowhere else. It actually moves between decks five and eight, making it a great place to people watch. Another Royal Promenade marvel is the Bow and Stern Bridge. Used as a stage for a number of ship events, the globe opens to reveal a walkway that serves as the visual center of the Royal Promenade. It's not uncommon to find the captain at the helm on this bridge during special events and receptions with guests. If that wasn't already enough, the Royal Promenade hosts street spectaculars and events that fill the space with smiles and laughter. Our 70s disco street party is probably the biggest event of, of the cruise. Uh, we may have seen it on smaller ships where it sort of started in the small discos and we came in and it was a 15, 20 minute event. It's now uh, been moved to the main, sort of the heart of the ship, if you will, the Royal Promenade. We've got amazing costumes, the afros are out, all the, uh, the sort of retro wear from the 70s. Uh, our staff are dressed up and we're going to teach you some dances that happen uh, throughout the activity. Uh, we do all the classic dances from the shuffle to the YMCA, Macho Man come out uh, and entertain as well. So we're going to see a little bit of everything. It's something truly for everyone to come out and enjoy. One of the amazing things about 70s, when we first started out, everyone sort of thinks it's going to be a show or another parade they're going to see, but this is something that is truly interactive. We encourage everyone to, you know, get their John Travolta out or, you know, put the afros on. Some people even dress up for this event, but to see the people sort of morph from, you know, sort of step touching, clapping from our first song, by the end of it, uh, once we've gone through all the dances and they've seen all the great surprises, they're totally into it and everyone's having a great time. So they, they really come out of their shells for the 70s night. It's an amazing experience.
Here, entertainers and crew take to the street in elaborate costumes and crazy contraptions, celebrating cultures and simply having a good time. You're bound to see singing, dancing, stilt walking, and even flying. There's no limit to what and who you might bump into. When you're on the Royal Promenade, it's all about letting loose and having a great time. When you're here, you're in the middle of the action. If the fancy freestyle on the Royal Promenade doesn't snap you into vacation mode, nothing will. High above the excitement of the boardwalk and the serenity of Central Park is the pool and sports zone. In this neighborhood, everyone has a chance to play, satisfy a sense of adventure, or simply relax and take in a little Caribbean sun. The pool and sports zone reaches across the entire length of the ship with activities and fun for all ages. Whether you want to shoot a round of golf with the family, kick back and fall asleep in a tranquil environment, or jumpstart your day with an exhilarating activity, the pool and sports zone is the place to do it. This neighborhood features four unique pools. For sunbathing or a quick dip, there's the main pool. For serious swimming and water sports, there's the sports pool. Of the four, my favorite pool has to be the sports pool. It's the most active area on that deck. You get together with your fellow guests, play everything from the classic pool volleyball. We have our wacky pool games. Don't forget as well, the crew will join you when you challenge them at crew versus guests in volleyball. Now, the belly flop competition has been one of the most the classic, most popular activities that happen on the outer decks. Who is part of the men's international belly flop competition? It is traditionally in one of our main pools, but because this amazing ship has such great technology, we've taken belly flop to the next level. We're taking you to the aqua theater for this event. We're going to have the guys jump off the traditional box, so they're going to head into the aqua theater pool. Okay. With all the amazing technology in the aqua theater, we have these huge LED screens that show replays. It shows the score of each of our floppers after we tabulate it from you, the judges, and the audience. We even have an underwater camera. So not only will the flop count, but the underwater showmanship will also be a factor in when the judges make the decision. It is truly an amazing, amazing activity. At the end of the competition, we award prizes to all of our floppers and, of course, medals to our top three. And we have a little surprise at the end of the competition as well to really show off the capabilities of the Aqua Theatre. For the kids, the H2O zone simply can't be beat. Here, all sorts of ocean creatures, including a giant octopus with spraying tentacles, make a lure of the seas an experience they'll never forget. The fourth pool is the beach pool. It features a sloped entry, just like a real beach, so you can wade into the water or choose to relax in colorful beach chairs under an umbrella as the water rolls gently beneath. For guests who prefer warmer waters, two whirlpools can be found on either side of the beach pool. Prefer a slower pace? The solarium is a tranquil grown-up environment with plush seating and loungers. It's quiet, relaxing, and simply beautiful, though it too has its wild side. Now the solarium is a peaceful during the day, but really picks up at night as we transform into two amazing outdoor nightclubs. One of which is 20, it's our outdoor sort of South Beach style nightclub. The second of which is Skate, which is by Malibu. We've got live music, our dancers come back out, drink specials, really cool atmosphere and something really truly unique you'll enjoy on the ship. If you're up for a little competition, head to the sports deck. On the sports court, you're bound to find a friendly game of basketball, volleyball, or dodgeball. Care to hang 10 on one of the Allure's two Flow Rider surf simulators? Over 2,000 guests a week try the ride, not all of them successfully. With water rushing across the top of the flow surface at over 30 miles an hour, it's not easy to keep balanced, but it sure is fun to give it a shot. Whether it's bodyboarding or surfing, the flow riders can be just as much fun to watch as they are to try.
The wild times don't stop there. Not far from the Flow Riders, you'll find the launching pad, a truly thrilling, heart pumping adrenaline rush. Suspended nine decks above the boardwalk is the allure of the sea's zip line. The zip line gives about a thousand adventurers a week a bird's eye view of the action below. If ever there was a way to go all out and conquer a fear of heights, this is it. It only takes 10 seconds to make the journey, but this is a memory you'll have forever. The home for fun and sun, the pool and sport zone neighborhood truly creates a vacation experience like no other. Welcome to Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness, Allure's most tranquil neighborhood. This is a place of relaxation and wellness, a retreat to help you rebalance and re-energize during your cruise vacation. Royal Caribbean's Vitality program offers nutritious menu options, meta spa, and holistic spa services, out of this world fitness facilities and classes, and a beauty salon that promises to make you look as good as you feel. In the fitness center, you can participate in any number of complimentary and specialized classes and seminars, or simply opt to use the equipment at your own pace. Whether you want a new look or simply want to look your best, the professional stylists are available to keep you primped, polished, and pampered to perfection. To erase stress and tension, a variety of offerings are available. Whether it's a traditional or deep pressure massage, the techniques will balance the spirit and transport you to the ultimate state of bliss. Taking your body on a journey of total renewal has never been easier. The Royal Caribbean Vitality Program will help you find ways to work wellness into every aspect of your cruise vacation, as well as the tools you need to continue living with vitality at home. Once you're feeling completely rejuvenated, it's time to take a trip to the wild side, entertainment place, this neighborhood features casino thrills, show-stopping theater, laugh-it-up comedy, and so much more. The Pulse of the Ship After Dark Entertainment Place is a contemporary nightclub district with a remarkable amount of variety. Start by venturing into Jazz on Four, an intimate setting for jazz and blues. Across the way is Blaze, where you can dance to the latest club music late into the night. Laugh it up in Comedy Live, the funniest comedy club and improv theater at sea. Women are amazing. <laughs> Women pack better than men, am I right? Yes. Who did, who did the packing for the cruise? <laughs> the ladies that want to know why, because when a woman packs, she plans every single day down to the underwear. <laughs> when a woman goes away, she's packing these two pairs of underwear a day for herself. She will. They plan it Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Honey, we gonna go horseback riding on Sunday? Sunday, 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 Sunday. <laughs> love is crazy. Isn't love crazy? <laughs> Especially in the beginning. Because anyone out there going through a beginning love, a lot of you going through a beginning love. Anyone? <laughs> Do you know what I mean when I say beginning? Like in the beginning when you love each other so much, you have to tell each other every three seconds. I love you, but two. <laughs> love you three, but four. I was in one place in uh, uh, Detroit, and they had the remote not bolted down, but they had printed on it, this will not work on your TV at home. <laughs> like, I'm changing channels in Michigan. My wife's in L.A. Too far, 9-11, what the hell's going on? <laughs> We're in a million years, I'm going to thought to steal a remote from a hotel, would you? No, right? No! I saw that printed on there, I threw it in my bag, and I kept it. <laughs> I did it, I left him a note. That's okay, I got my TV from a hotel, too. <laughs> Do we have people here that speak multiple languages? Yes, anybody? Yes? All right here? <laughs> How many? Uh, three. three languages, what? Uh, English, it Russian, Ukrainian. English, Russian, and Ukrainian? Isn't, isn't like the Ukrainian just Russian plus two extra vodkas? <laughs> Royal Caribbean Productions sets the standard for cruise line entertainment, and the allure is no exception. From Broadway caliber performers to an Olympic caliber ice cast, top talent makes every show here a must see event. Hosting three sensational shows a week, the Amber Theater is a state of the art masterpiece. At three decks high, and with a seating capacity of over 1,400 guests, the Amber blends elegance and ingenuity. 
Headlining the entertainment is the ship's signature Tony Award-winning Broadway production, Chicago, the Musical. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz. Chicago the Musical is an all singing, all dancing Broadway show. It is actually one of the longest running shows on Broadway. And we're lucky enough to perform it here on the Allure for the first time. It's being performed at sea. The show opens with All That Jazz, which is probably one of my favorite numbers. It does really set the style and the pace of the show so the audience know what to expect. Melanie, who plays Velma Kelly, absolutely shines in this number as do our fantastic ensemble, which I have to tell you, they're all not only dancing their socks off, but they are singing live at the same time. Who's Fred K. Sweet? My ex-boyfriend. Why'd you shoot him? I was leaving. Was he angry? Like a madman. Still, I said Fred, move along. She knew that she was doing wrong. Then describe it. He came toward me. With a pistol. From my bureau. Did you fight him? Like a tiger. He had strength and she had none. And yet we both reached for the gun. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, we both, oh, yes, we both, oh, yes, we both reached for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun. Oh, yes, we both reached for the gun, for the gun. We're all very passionate for Chicago. We're having a great time. It's a very, very special show, and we feel very lucky to be here. In addition to the weekly productions of Chicago, the Amber Theater hosts a number of rotating guest performers. Some of the leading acts in the world consider it an honor to perform under the lights on Allure. Rounding out the lineup of spectacular shows in the Amber Theater is Blue Planet, a daring production that brings together singers, acrobats, dancers, and flyers in an experience that unfolds around and above the audience. The show follows our featured vocalist who plays Mother Nature in a journey through different aspects of our planet, such as the desert, oceans, rainforests, and mountains. Blue Planet is unique in that it combines the cast of Chicago with the acrobats and the dancers from our Ocean Aria show in this incredible collaboration of skill and artistry. We also have a team of about 13 technicians working on the show with us. They control everything from the aerial aspects of the show to the scenery movements as well as lighting and sound design. And all of that is set here in the beautiful Amber Theatre on the Allure of the Seas, which was specifically designed for Blue Planet. Enjoy the movie. 3D movies are also a favorite at the Amber Theater. Guests get to enjoy the latest DreamWorks movies, as well as classic favorites. During the day, guests have the chance to do something truly unique in Studio B. Ice skating, on the ocean, in the Caribbean. Whether you're an experienced skater keeping your ability in check, or just trying it out for the first time, strapping on a pair of skates on a cruise ship is deserving of bragging rights. Not everybody is going to be good at it, but don't worry, you don't have to be as good as our pros. Ice Games is based on Monopoly. We've adjusted the board though so that we travel to different venues around the ship. In the opening, we introduce Mr. Monopoly and all our pawn pieces. From there, we travel to Giovanni's table, where we have lots of fun. We introduce our waiter and maybe a girl who's had a little too much wine on board. From that point, we go to the boardwalk, where all the skaters jump on the carousel and go for a ride. The dice roll then takes us to the on-air club, where the skaters get to rock out and play Guitar Hero. From there, the pawn lands on Deck 15, where we go to the Challenger's Arcade, where the game player plays a game called The Secret Life. This is a role-playing game where we have castles, vampires, and even a damsel in distress. Uh, we stroll through Casino Royale where it's all glitz and glamour. 
We meet the beautiful showgirls and we flash and cash. We have 10 cast members in our cast and they're from all over the world. Uh, we have skaters who have competed internationally and skaters who have toured all around the world as professional skaters. In mere minutes, Studio B converts from an ice skating rink to a fully functional venue used for a variety of other events. Oh my goodness, There's a few events I love to host, one of which happens right here in Studio B, and it's our adult scavenger hunt game we call The Quest. It is truly one of the wildest, craziest games you're going to see on the Seven Seas. Again, whether you've cruised for the first time or this is your fifth cruise, we always make it spicy and different every time. So we start the quest off by explaining all the rules and regulations, uh, the few that we have for this activity. Uh, then we separate you into teams, up to anywhere from eight to ten teams, up to a hundred players on each of the teams. So it's truly a collaborative experience. I may ask for an individual with an individual item. I may ask for a team, up to six players, or might be even six items. Uh, it could be anything. So we truly make it wild and crazy. It progresses as it is an adult scavenger hunt game and could get as wild and crazy as the crowd wants it to really get. You sort of read it as it goes, but it could be everything from a cruise compass uh, to a guy wearing bras. So after 45 minutes of running around, ripping clothes off, sharing these experiences together, we announce the winning team and uh, truly gives a bragging rights to whoever wins this. One of the activities that really brings you together, whether you be with the new stranger you just met and now you're going to become friends because you're on the same team at the Quest, or you're with some family members you never thought would have participated in the caliber they did. People will do things they never thought they would do when they walk into Studio B, and they won't believe it when they walk out of Studio B once the game show is over. So you'll see your fellow guests do some things again uh, that might regret the next day, but had a great time doing it uh, that evening. Another one of the events I love to host is the Love and Marriage Game Show. This is the game show where I take three couples from different stages of marriage, bring them up on stage, ask them questions, and find out how well they really know each other. It's an event not to be missed. All right, question number one. Where did you go on your first date and how much was spent? Uh, Brazilian carnival party at the K Kansas University. <laughs> carnival party in Kansas. No, I heard you. <laughs> Thank you for louder. It makes it clearer. Um, so it was a Brazilian party at this Kansas State University. Kansas University. Kansas University. Okay, KU. Don't mix. K don't mix it up. <laughs> okay, so and how much was spent at the uh, KU uh, Brazilian carnival party? Probably 150 bucks. We drink a lot. Oh, okay, good. We went to a Brazilian carnival party. Okay. And how? It's not. Wait, wait. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so, and how much was spent for complete points? Does that include the hotel? Yeah, Luis has some explaining to do. No, he didn't tell us about the hotel, but I guess it's the package deal that uh, you know, Carney Vowels have. 150? Yes! <laughs> so give him a kiss. You can high five and kiss. He's, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's, so apparently, hotels are pretty cheap at the Carney Vowels because you spent 150 bucks on booze and saved nothing for the hotel. So it's just stayed. Stayed by the river there, down by the ditch. Uh, what do you do to put your husband in a romantic mood? <laughs> look at him. Really? Is there a certain look, or is there? <laughs> no, I'm good. That worked for me. Okay. Uh, What is your most, uh, what does she do about you in a romantic mood? Boy, just, uh, the stripper pole helps in the bed. Yes! Yes! That is what she told 2,000 people. Um, <laughs> obviously my hydraulic stripper pole that pops up from the floor in our bedroom. Um, no, no. No, no. Wow. Uh, man, I want to be you. Um, uh, you're a secret agent and your wife. Wow. Okay. Oh, man, one day. Okay, no, she actually said she just gives you the look and she goes. Man, yeah, so give him a shot there. What is your husband's most embarrassing habit? Calling me madam. <laughs> he calls you madam? And there are people who associate madam with not being married, you know. I, I don't understand what you're saying, uh, Julie. Well, you know, there are women who are called madam, and I'm not a madam. 
I'm really having difficulty uh, understanding this lingo. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so la okay, thank you, thank you, Melody, ladies of the night. Okay, really? So is this in public space? Is he'll call you just jokingly, or it's just something he says, and then somehow it all depends on where we are, and then there are people who turn around and look to see if I'm a melon. <laughs> okay, and then you gotta go. Hi. All right, George. What do you think? Uh, what do you think, um, Julie? Say, what's your most embarrassing habit? One of two things: it's either my smoking cigars or I call her madam. Yes, I'm going with the madam, and the cigars has already been taken. That is a match. <laughs> she has to explain uh, to me about the madam part, but yes, give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. They're madam. Another favorite of the entertainment neighborhood is Casino Royale. This Vegas-style gaming center boasts 450 slot machines, 27 table games, and a bevy of electronic games, from blackjack to poker and even roulette. There's plenty to play and even more to win. The last and perhaps most popular attractions in the entertainment neighborhood are the familiar faces from DreamWorks Animation. Vacationers of all ages delight in interacting with some of DreamWorks' most beloved characters in a variety of shows and activities. Both Royal Caribbean and uh, DreamWorks Animation have a couple of things in common with one another. Um, one, we, I think, uh, are both uh, innovative companies trying to uh, raise the bar, uh, deliver a quality uh, experience. So whether it's, you know, in the world of uh, water, uh, theater, the ice rink, movie theater, uh, on uh, the television sets, online, uh, you know, th these, are, these are sailing uh, paradise cities. So for us to be able to integrate our characters and our stories and our storytelling uh, throughout that experience, uh, we think is uh, just going to be a lot of fun and a u unique experience for uh, the guests on the uh, on the ship. Don't be surprised if you see Shrek, Fiona, and Puss in Boots, or Alex, Mort, Gloria, and the Penguins of Madagascar, Poe of Kung Fu Panda, and your favorite characters from How to Train Your Dragon. Our next show is How to Train Your Dragon, and it's adapted from the DreamWorks movie, and we have Viking characters as well as our walking characters on the ice. We start out in the village of Burke, where we meet Hiccup and Astrid and all our characters. We also introduce you to all of our dragons, including Toothless. The ice show is a shortened version of the movie. This show is so much fun. It's fun for everyone, the entire family, not just the kids. And the show doesn't end on the ice. You're gonna see the skaters and the characters interact with the entire audience. You're going to see them in the hall, in the stairwells, and that's not where all the surprises will end. On the ice, you're going to see our Viking skaters, our walking characters, as well as we have puppets and kites. And not only do we have our ice skaters in the show, we also have our friends from the DreamWorks family. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. This is a great show. The costumes are amazing, the set pieces are beautiful. Everyone is really going to enjoy it. The DreamWorks characters star in special events, parades, and even character meals in the main dining room. Then comes the main event. The DreamWorks characters take the stage in the Aqua Theater to perform a one-of-a-kind aquatic show full of acrobatics and high-diving stunts. With Royal Caribbean and the DreamWorks experience, the entertainment never stops. The seventh and final neighborhood on our tour of Allure of the Seas is the Youth Zone, home of the award-winning Adventure Ocean program. The heart of Youth Zone is Kids Avenue, located on Deck 14. No ordinary avenue, this path guides children through Adventure Ocean's play areas. In the Youth Zone, parents can relax and enjoy the ship, all while knowing their babies are in the hands of specially trained, dedicated professionals. 
Of course, parents are always welcome to join in for Kids in Play, where parents can play with their children in an open, interactive environment. When babies and tots need to burn off some energy, this is the place to do it. Royal Caribbean's Adventure Ocean Facility prides itself in being one of the best children's programs in the world, and we've taken great lengths to make sure that we're partnered with the best children's name brands we have. So from Fisher Price for the young kids, are great toys specifically designed for our kids and the programs that we run with them. All of our art in the programs have been specifically designed for Adventure Ocean with Crayola. And we have all Crayola activities, so all of our Crayola markers, we have Crayola crayons, every single thing that you could ever want that has to do with art, Crayola has really helped us out a lot in that. Open until the wee hours of the night, Adventure Ocean has something for every age group. Kids are encouraged to play, explore, discover, create, and imagine. Making new friendships that last long after the cruise ends isn't uncommon either. New to Adventure Ocean is a 60-seat theater dedicated to providing movies, improv classes, and more. The theater gives kids a glimpse into the world of arts and culture. It's also the home of the Imagine Ocean, an incredible production designed specifically for kids. Performed under special black lights, the show follows the journey of three fish and their hunt for treasure, only to discover it was friendship that was the true treasure all along. So the fun doesn't stop here in Adventure Ocean. Now there's fun all over the ship, but there's very specific family fun that we in Adventure Ocean have helped to develop, and that's the family activities. And the biggest of the family activities is the family festival, and that takes place in the boardwalk. So we take over the entire boardwalk and we turn it into a carnival. And it's got balloon animals, we've got prize giveaways, we've got stilt walkers, face painting, and all the great, great aspects of the carnival. The carousel's obviously running, there's a hot dog stand out there all the time. You guys should just come out and check it out because it's unreal and there's nothing else like it. The neighborhood also includes teen-only spaces like Fuel Disco, the living room, and the back deck. Located on the aft part of the ship near the sports zone, there's enough here to keep any teen occupied. With a whole lineup of activities and parties geared just for them, there's a good chance parents won't see much of their kids during the cruise. A cool hangout and a parent-free zone, teens come to meet other teens, play games, or simply just chillax. There is another whole world behind the scenes on the allure of the seas. One of the most technologically advanced areas of the allure is the bridge. As the captain on board the allure of the seas, I'm responsible for the overall operation of the ship, which obviously includes the safe navigation, uh, onboard safety, and that the, all the guests uh, has a safe cruise vacation. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Captain Johnny speaking from the bridge. When it comes to interaction with guests, I really like that. Being out there, talking to guests, walk through the royal promenade or the boardwalk or on the outer decks, and just go and interact with the guests when they don't expect to see me. Then I get uh, all the fun stuff and uh, fun questions and people tell me how the cruise vacation was and their experience. And it, it becomes very informal and I really enjoy that. Here on the navigation bridge, we have, uh, the room is divided into two. In the front part, we have the area where the navigation officers are driving the ship. And behind us, we have the safety center. That's where we have a navigation officer monitoring any aspect of the safe operation of the ship. That could be answering telephones, that could be uh, monitoring fire alarms that comes in. On the stern of the ship, we have three azipods. And in the front of the ship, I have four propellers that works sideways, which I use when I dock the ship. So a cooperation between the azipods on the stern, the bow thrust, the forward, I can make the ship go sideways, I can spin around on the dime, I can back the ship with 17 knots, I can move her sideways 4 knots and go ahead 24 knots. The maneuverability of this magnificent ship is absolutely unbelievable, so it's a very, very maneuverable ship. I'm always on the bridge when we go in and out of the port to make sure that we have a safe operation, either training the younger officers or doing it myself with the, our propulsion and our navigation system. On board the uh, Allure of the Seas we have both uh, the new version of navigation as well as the old version of navigation. So we have the electronic chart display information systems which is our new means of navigation, but we also use the very reliable old means of navigation which is the traditional paper charts, parallel rulers, triangles, and using our traditional procedures such as radar fixes and uh, celestial navigation in order to uh, make sure that both means are accurate for safe navigation. We have um, navigation officers uh, working here on the navigation bridge, we have electricians working around the ship and we have engineers working with the power plant on in the uh, engine room. Right now we are in the engine control room and, and uh, 
This is where we distribute all the power throughout the shift. We have six main diesel engines. We have three 16 cylinders and we have three 12 cylinder engines. They produce 97 megawatts and that equal to 135,000 horsepower. I've been uh, very lucky. I've been the startup captain and been on the Voyager class ships for the last 11 years. Started with the Voyager and I served on all of them for a long time. And uh, now I'm very, very happy and pleased and honored and uh, proud to say that I'm the captain on the biggest cruise ship in the world, the Allure of the Seas. The Allure of the Seas offers one of the most diverse collections of beverage and dining options. Many guests are curious how this complex operation runs behind the scenes. Yeah, obviously I cannot cook myself for 8,000 people every day on the Allure of the Seas, so I'm supported for an altogether 350 employees. 250 of them, uh, they are cooks and chefs, meaning I have five executive sous chefs, 11 sous chefs who are running the various uh, venues, areas on board. And of course, very important, I have a team of 100 stewards who are supporting us, the culinary team, you know, cleaning the dishes, running the dish ring, cleaning our galleys. And I promise you, you can come to every given time in our galleys and it looks absolutely superb and spotless. We have very sophisticated equipment who helps us, you know, to produce fresh on a daily base, but still able to help us big quantities. We have a machine who's cutting lettuce for us. This machine helps us to cut these lettuce in about 30 minutes. This machine produces about 4,000 dough rolls and one single baker can operate the machine. He's filling up the dough, the dough rolls come out, he's putting it on a tray, and one hour later he has done his 4,000 rolls he needs for the dining room. To use fresh ingredients makes such a big difference because of, on the end of the day, it's all about flavor. Uh, presentation, you can present everything, but to get the, the, a nice flavor in, uh, that's where you really need a fresh product. Every single Sunday, we or one of my executive sous chefs stay outside receiving the fresh produce. We see and touch this product and we really cook from the scratch. We don't do anything different than a small restaurant, just on a greater, bigger scale. The taste panel, we call it taste panel, but we do pretty much for every meal period. That's about a 10 to 15 minute short briefing where all the dishes get presented together with all the responsible people for the dishes. And uh, we check on the final presentation, the final taste, maybe there need to be a touch of seasoning more, maybe a herb or the garnish. And we give a short briefing to the crew about what is important to follow up on the presentation, you know, how to keep it warm, you know, the critical things what we foresee. So uh, I think overall we had a very good day so far. The guys be sharp tonight again in the, in the line for the first sitting. I think you see yesterday, first sitting went excellent, huh? Yeah, guests always ask me about the quantities, you know, we're going through. Every week we run through 18,000 pounds of watermelon, uh, 15,000 pounds of pineapple, about 12,000 pounds of honeydew and cantaloupe each. We use about 10 to 12,000 pounds of fresh fish fillets, um, five to 6,000 pounds of mussels, shrimp, you know, all these crustaceous. And the meat in the butcher shop, I would say, between three and a half to 4,000 pounds of meat and poultry products in our on board butcher shop. We're very proud of our pastry section here on board. We have um, the biggest station on board is our pastry section. We have 25 pastry cooks, chefs working there. And then again, it, uh, it get all done centralized. So in the main galley, we produce all the pastries in a 24 hour shift again, while you can be assured every single dessert what you enjoy during the day is just been done the night before or in the morning. What's the difference between a restaurant on land and on a cruise ship? The really huge major difference is I need to be very careful about my inventory because I cannot go shopping on day five if I run out of something. What started as a big idea in a Finnish shipyard is now an even bigger success story. The allure of the seas is the most exciting, entertaining, amazing place on the seas. Every time she sets sail, memories are made that will last lifetimes. Whether it's a family vacation or a romantic getaway, the allure and the pristine waters of the Caribbean make the perfect setting. What will you remember most about your time aboard Allure? Well, only you know for sure. From Broadway productions to the fine dining, Allure of the Seas will leave you with a stunning collection of memories. 
She'll also have you asking one important question. When can we come back?